Our last QQT from Unit 3 is called Tetherball and Net Force versus Time. So same setup as 8-4 and 8-5. Um, we are now being asked, um, the platform rotates with a constant angular speed, which of the above graphs correctly shows the magnitude of the net force exerted on the sphere as a function of time. So uh, the net force on that ball is constant, right? The net force is mv squared over r. The direction is constantly changing, but the magnitude is constant. So uh, graph B is the correct answer. Um, so one uh, point there for choosing graph B and one point for saying, well, if the mass is constant, the velocity is constant, the radius is constant, the force must be constant. So hopefully that was on the easy side for you. If not, that's okay, that's why we practice. Part B says, is the magnitude of the tension in the string greater than, less than, or equal to the centripetal force exerted on the sphere? Right. Last problem, they asked us how it related to the weight of the ball, but it's almost the exact same question. Right. The centripetal force is being provided by the tension. So um, what we have there is the centripetal force is equal, sorry, the x component of the tension is equal to the centripetal force. So if we say the centripetal force is equal to the x component of tension, right, and that the x component has to be smaller than the actual magnitude of the tension, the same argument we made for the last problem, then we know that the tension has to be greater than the centripetal force. For one, So one point for getting that, one point for relating it to the components, and one point for justifying saying, well, the, component, the magnitude of the component has to be smaller than the magnitude of the entire force. So on to question C. So question C says the string is nearly vertical when the sphere's tangential speed is very small. Without writing any equations or formulas, explain why. Well, again, we're talking about um, the tension force balancing out gravity. So at low speeds, the net force is very small. Okay, If the horizontal force is small, the tension, which is providing the centripetal force, is small. So we have one point here for saying that since the speed is small, the force is low. And then one point for saying that if the force is low, then the angle of the tension is small because tension is almost vertical when the force is small. Right? So I guess we didn't write any equations there. So part D, now we have a student derives this formula that says V squared equals GL tan theta sine theta. And we're asked if this is consistent or inconsistent with what we said in part B, or excuse me, part C. So what happens then as theta approaches zero on this right-hand side of the equation? Well, the tangent of zero is zero, and the sine of theta is zero. So as theta approaches zero, the velocity must also approach zero. And that was exactly what we said. As that angle gets lower, the speed gets lower, or vice versa, as the speed gets lower, the angle gets lower. So 1.4, saying that it's lower, 1.4 having some sort of functional dependence, okay, some, some way of trying to relate what's happening on the left-hand side and what's happening to the right-hand side, and then one point for actually getting it correct. Okay, now part E, you might have guessed, we're going to try to graph stuff, okay? Um, they're going to record... They're going to keep all the other variables constant. So in other words, G, G and L are going to be constant. They're going to, which one are they vary? They're recording V and theta. So they didn't really tell us which one they're keeping um, constant and which one they're recording, but it doesn't matter. So what we want then to find out acceleration due to gravity, we want to graph V squared, okay, versus, you could graph v squared versus, uh, sorry, v squared versus tan theta sine theta, okay? And then if you did that, your slope would be gl, so you just divide by l to get gravity. You could graph v versus 
the square root of tangent theta sine theta. I know that seems weird, but like if you're just doing this on a computer anyways and it's generating, all you got to do is plug in theta. So one's not any more difficult than the other there. Uh, so either one of those. So one point for putting V on one axis and uh, theta or tan, tan theta sine theta on the other. Um, and then one point for the correct functional dependence. Part F says, let I be the rotational inertia of the sphere rod platform system. Does I increase, decrease, or stay the same when theta increases? Okay, so when theta increases, if you look at the drawing, um, as theta, the, the ball is closest to the center at when theta is zero. Now this is asking us when theta decreases. So let's start out at theta equals 90. That's when the ball is farthest away from the center, and that means the largest moment of inertia. But as theta decreases, and I'll even just write this down, that m gets closer. To the center and when mass gets closer to the center then the moment of inertia decreases so one point for indicating that it decreases and one point for saying that you know because as theta de decreases the mass gets closer to the center and that decreases the rotational inertia so that's it for the unit 3 qqt questions